Hello, I'm Jacqueline Polliff, and today I'll be explaining how to replace a gut harp string. Now, whenever you have any kind of broken string on the harp, the basic process remains the same. In a nutshell, what you want to do is remove the broken string, take your new length of string and tie a knot if needed, then thread it up to the harp and wind it around the tuning pin at the top. There are some variations depending on the um, type of string that you're working with and the diameter of the string that you're working with, but the overall process remains the same. Harp strings can be made out of three different materials, nylon, gut, and wire. And when it comes to changing strings, working with nylon and gut is pretty similar, but wire strings are quite different. So as I mentioned today, I'll be changing gut strings I'll be using this pedal harp as an example, and first I'll change one of these lower, thicker gut strings, and then I'll change one of the um, higher, thinner gut strings, because the process changes a little bit for those. You'll need a few things in order to replace the string. You'll need your tuning key, which we use to wind the new string up. You'll also need, of course, <laughs> the string itself. <laughs> that always helps. And then for the uh, smaller string, you'll need some sort of anchor for the knot. And we'll talk more about what these are and how they work when we're working with that smaller string. And then you'll need um, something to trim off the excess string once it's on there. Some people use nail clippers. You could also use scissors or wire cutters. The first step is to remove the broken string, which is quite easy. Um, our string here is in two pieces. We have this kind of long, piece here, which is just a dangling. And then we have a little piece that's still wound up here around the tuning pin. To remove the longer length of string, we'll use these access holes in the back of the harp here and just reach in, uh, find the knot for the, the string that's broken and pull it right out. To remove the small piece of broken string, you can just grab the free end, unwind it, and then pull it right out of the tuning pin. Once you've removed the broken string, there are two small steps to preparing your harp. One is that you want to make sure that the pedal is in flat, the topmost position, or if you play the lever harp, that your lever is disengaged, that it's down. So either way, with a pedal or a lever harp, you don't want anything mechanically that's going to get in the way of the new string. Then the other thing you need to do is take your tuning key Attach it to the string in question, and if you're looking at your tuning pin right here, you'll see that there's a little hole in the center of it. And you just want to turn the tuning pin until that hole is vertical. That way when you uh, bring the new string up, you can thread it straight through there really easily. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the new string on the harp. Figuring out what string you need can be a little bit confusing, so I actually have a whole separate video about that, about the materials that the strings are made out of and the numbering system to differentiate between the strings. So if you have questions about that, I'd suggest that you watch that. But for now, we'll just assume that you know what kind of string you need and everything. In this instance, our broken string is a fourth octave B, and it's a gut string. So I have here a fourth octave gut B string. And the strings come in these, these little kind of plastic packages. So you just open them up the Ziploc bag. Oops, it's kind of stuck in there. And then you take out a length of string like this. It comes coiled up. When you're working with gut string, you want to be kind of gentle so as not to bend the string. So to uncoil it, you can simply um, take one of the loose ends and you know go under over until it unwinds and you have a length like this. And you can see that it is too long. It's much too long for the space where we're going to put it, which is great. That gives you plenty of room to work with, to tie your knot, and to wind it around the top. There are two different options for this next part in terms of the order of the steps. One is that you can take your length of string, tie your knot, then use the other end and thread it up through the back of the harp, grab it here, and pull your string on up. Some people just flip it around. They to, um, thread the string from the top side down, so starting here and coming through, then reach around, grab it and pull it out the back, and then tie their knot second. Either way works just fine. Uh, sometimes I change which order I do it in depending on the harp and how easy it is or isn't to get my hands in and out of the holes on the back. For this string, I'm going to tie the knot first and then thread it up 
through the harp. When it comes to tying knots, there are many variations in the way that people tie their knots. Of course, the goal is just to have something that holds securely, something that's going to keep your string in place well. Uh, the knot that I'm holding here is a finished example of the knot that I'm going to show you how to tie. This is the knot that I've always used, and it's a pretty standard harp knot. Um, you'll see that there are two loops. There's this big loop here, and then there's a second loop that wraps around the outside of that. So to tie the knot in our new length of string, what I like to do is have the, uh, the end of the string pointing out to the left. Then I use my left hand and I make a simple loop, just an upside down U, nothing crossing. Then I take my right hand and I make a crossed loop. So to do that one, I flip it on top of itself so that the cross is sitting in front. So now we have our two loops, the upside down U in the left hand, the cross looped in the right hand. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cross loop and put it on top of the upside down U. And I'm going to keep the cross right there with my thumb so that it's, uh, I guess, facing in to the upside down U. So once you get to this point, then all you have to do is tighten up the cross loop. Just kind of feed it through there, wrap it around, give it a little pull, and then we have our knot. Once you have the string knotted, then you want to take the other end and thread it up through the back of the harp. You'll then see it pop through on this side, and you can just grab the end and pull the string all the way through. At this point, you take the end of the string and you thread it through the hole in the tuning pin and pull it all the way up. You want to make sure that it looks just like the strings around it so that it's to the left of the bridge pin here and going nicely through the center of the discs the way all of the strings on either side do as well. Then all you need to do is wind the string up. So you take your tuning key, attach it to the tuning pin on the back side, and turn it away from yourself the same way you would if you were making the string sharper or higher. And as you turn, you want to pull this end out away from the harp so it doesn't get in the way. And then you just want to make sure that it winds in a tidy manner. So sometimes I kind of put a finger here to guide the string. The same way you would if you were winding up a spool of thread and you want all the thread to lay nicely next to each other. Once you have the string wound around a few times, you can start checking the tuning. New strings are always very low and you have to bring them up to pitch. So usually what I do is I play the string right below the new one and then the new one and I compare them. <laughs> that one sounds pretty awful. <laughs> so I just keep doing that while I'm turning until they're pretty much the same. That means that your string is close to being where you want it to be in terms of tuning. So then I switch and I play the string an octave lower and compare those two. And I keep bringing it up. Until they're in tune. New strings will always stretch a lot, which means that it will just keep going flat. If I play it again now, even though it's only been a few seconds, it's already starting to go a little bit flat. And if you let it sit for half an hour and come back, it will be quite flat. So whenever you have a new string, you have to tune it extra um, fairly often. <laughs> so you could try and just run in a few times throughout the day and keep tuning your new string, just the one. You don't have to do the whole harp. But um, for a while, well, it kind of stretches and settles in. The last step to putting on your new string is to trim off this excess piece. Some people do this immediately, right after they put the new string on. And some people like to wait a couple of hours or a couple of days to make sure that there are no problems with the new string. If there is a problem and you have to take it off and put it back on, then you want this long piece so you have plenty of string to work with. But once you're satisfied, all you have to do is clip it off. And you could use nail clippers or scissors. I'm going to use my wire cutters. So you just, um, making sure not to, to touch the wood of the harp or any other strings, snip it off pretty close to the end, like so. And then your new string is all set. Now we're going to go ahead and replace another gut string. This time we're going to replace this second octave C 
which is a much smaller and thinner string than the fourth octave B we were just working with. And I have here the replacement string, a second octave C in gut. Whenever you're working with the thinner strings, generally considered um, strings from the D above middle C all the way up to the top of the harp, for these strings you have to add two extra steps to your string changing process. First, we use the same basic knot, but we add an anchor to it. If you don't add an anchor and just use a regular knot, there's a chance that because the string is so thin, when you pull it up, the knot might pull and get stuck in the middle of the harp, rather than holding the string securely. So what you do is you tuck a little extra piece into your knot to serve as an anchor. There are a couple of different materials that people use, but the most common are uh, string ends. This is a string end. It's just a little, about an inch long piece of string, and you tuck that right in the middle of your knot. Um, if you're ordering music or strings from a harp supply company, you can ask them to throw in a few for free, and they will. Uh, you can also make your own string ends, which is what I do. So this is an old string. Usually I save the fifth octave C, B, and A strings, and um, I chop them up. <laughs> so I just take my string and my wire cutters, and I chop off little pieces from the end. Whoops, that one got a little crazy. So those, um, then I put them in a bag like this, and then any time that I need to change one of these small strings, I have a whole bag of string ends of anchors ready and waiting to use with my knots. The other variation for the thinner strings, again from the D above middle C all the way up to your top string, is that when you're winding the string around at the top, there's an extra step in the way that you wind it to keep the string from slipping. So we'll go ahead and change the second octave C and include both of those extra steps in the process. First, we're going to remove the broken string. This one broke uh, more towards the bottom. So our long piece is now on the harp and we'll just do the same kind of thing as before, kind of unraveling it and unwrapping it until you can pop it out like that. And then the bottom piece is just this little tiny bit which fell out and landed on the floor. Uh, sometimes these are really obvious when you walk in and sometimes you can't really find them. A lot of times when I go to move my harp later, I discover this line on the floor somewhere. But anyway, so those are our two pieces of broken string removed from the harp. Now we'll go ahead and prepare the harp, making sure that the pedals are in flat, any levers would be down, and then taking the tuning key and twisting the pin so that the hole in the middle is vertically aligned. Now I'll go ahead and tie the knot in our length of string. So just the same as the other one, I'm going to make an upside down U on the left side with my left hand. Then I'll make a crossed loop, crossing the string in on top of itself with my right hand. And then I'll put that crossed loop on top of the U. So the cross is facing into the U and goes on top of it. Then I'll tighten up the crossed loop until it's holding the U fairly well, but there's still a little bit of a gap to put the string end in. A lot of people are confused as to where exactly to put the string end. Basically, you just want it to be held well in there. What I do is I start by putting it in the center, and then I kind of tuck it behind the U loop like that. So there is our knot tied around the string end. Some people, when they're working with these very thin strings, like to do one more loop, making it a three-loop knot just for security. So you could just loop the string once more and then go ahead and go over the entire top and the string anchor and tighten it up. That makes for a very secure knot. If your knot isn't entirely tight at this point, that's fine because when you put it in the harp and start winding the string up, that naturally tightens your knot further. Once you have your knot tied, you can take the other end of your string and thread it up through the back of the harp like we did earlier. Some people prefer though, especially with these smaller strings, to do it the other way around. So in that instance, before you tie your knot, you would take the piece of string, thread it down through the top of the harp, reach in and pull it out the back side, and now tie your knot. Some people find this easier than trying to get their hand up 
into the string to thread it through that way. So either approach is fine, whichever you prefer. Once you have your knot tied and your string threaded through, then it's time to put it through the tuning pin at the top. Then you can just go ahead and pull it on up and then make sure that it's lining up properly through all of the action here. So going through the center of the discs and to the left of the bridge pin. Now we're ready to begin winding the string up. So just like before, first I'll attach my tuning key and I'm going to turn it away from myself the same way you would to make the string higher. I'll hold this piece out of the way, but this time we're gonna add another step. So after half a turn, I'm going to pause and take this loose end of the string and tuck it behind the string that's already on the harp. Like this. Then I'm just gonna pull it tight and all it's doing is adding a little knot there. Some people call this locking the string and there are a number of different ways to do it. The idea is that it keeps the string from slipping as you wind it around. But I've also seen harps where people do not lock their thin strings and they seem to work just fine. Once you've locked the string, then you just want to keep winding it the same way you did before, making sure that everything stays nice and tidy as it wraps around the tuning pin. And again, the string will be really flat and you'll need to bring it up. So I'm gonna play the string just below it and keep turning until they match. Then I'll switch and play the string an octave below and tune it that way. You could also use an electronic tuner once you get it pretty close to check and see that it's in tune. Now all you need to do is trim off the excess string. For these little tiny strings, I usually use my nail clippers because they're very precise and easy to trim with. So you just clip it like that. And frequently you have so much string left over that you can get a second string out of it. So you can save this really long piece, just pop it back into your package, and then the next time this string be breaks, you'll be all set and you can just use this to replace it. Remember that strings can break at any time and it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong in taking care of your harp. Sometimes when the seasons change, uh, quite a few strings might break or sometimes they just let go as they get older. Frequently, they seem to break in the middle of the night, which is a little bit strange. But if you have a broken string, there's no need to panic. You just want to go ahead and replace it. Good luck to you.